In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have two of these two and a half inch SATA hard drives in your MSI GT72 Dominator or Dominator Pro or any other variation of the GT72 MSI laptop. Now, as you can see here, normally the SSD would be in slot one the CD drive slot 3, the hard drive that comes with the computer slot 4. This is going to be slightly changed as we go along. This method will enable you to keep your CD, DVD, Blu-ray drive as well as add more storage capacity in hard drive form instead of solid state drive. First things first, you are going to have to take the cover off. Please note a couple disclaimers before I continue. I wouldn't recommend doing things like I'm doing here, whereas I'm doing it all on my bed with no anti static strap or anything. Yes, I'm kind of an idiot, okay? I'm just going to get that out of my system right now, and you can get it out of yours. So let's get started. I would recommend anti-static strap and have a work table. You will need to remove seven screws. This one is the most difficult to get to if you don't have the right tools, like I don't. I have this little skill tool set and the hole is too deep for this screwdriver to reach. So, you end up with a problem like that. Just pull the bit out and just barely hold it over the top. It works all right for me. So, and like I said, there's a 100% chance you will void your warranty. Once you get all the screws loose, the next thing to do is to gently pry at the rear of the laptop where you will find a lip. make it pretty simple, but it does help to have good fingernails. Particularly along these edges. Be careful that you don't have all your screws go flying across the place when you try to pry it up real quick. <laughs> Unless you take them out of the holes to begin with, which wouldn't be a bad idea, I guess. Go ahead and set this off to the side for now. This is the default configuration for the GT72 Dominator 047 with the GTX 870M 6 gig of GDDR5. A one terabyte hard drive and it comes stock with a 128 gigabyte Kingston which I removed in favor of a 120 because I wanted to go ahead and hang on to the factory configuration on the 128 drive with Windows 8.1 but I also am a lot happier with Windows 7 so I went ahead and replaced that drive with this one. Now as you can see here there is a second drive bay a standard laptop two and a half inch drive fits very well into this bay. However, there is a major problem in the fact that there is no secondary SATA port for this secondary bay. All six of those SATA slots you saw earlier. You got the CD drive, two, three, four, five, six. Because there's four slots on this little M2 card right here. I'll go ahead and lift that up for you. It's kind of spring-loaded. As you can see, that's pretty simple. The M2 card is currently in SSD 1. We got 2, 3, and 4. This I will come back to in a moment. Now, in order to get this hard drive to work, it's going to need power from somewhere. That's where this little cable here comes in. 
I got this from microsatacables.com. It is a 2 inch variation, I believe. They also come in a 4 and a 6 inch variation. But this works well enough for me. I've already gone ahead and checked out how this is going to work out in my configuration. And with this cable, I had to make a slight modification to the casing of the laptop. There used to be another fin going across here, which also holds this wire that goes to the right side speaker. No cut was made to the speaker cable, but you will, if, well, you may not have to make this particular cut, but I did. It's your choice. <clears throat> it made things easier for me, let me put it that way. Now, another thing to note about this motherboard is this SATA port and the CD drive SATA port are both SATA 2. All four of these are SATA 3. This drive is SATA 3 capable, connected to a SATA 2 port. Now we're going to change that up just a little bit because this drive is a little bit older and is a SATA 2 hard drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lift this little flap here. Pull the cable out, and just pull the whole thing before I rip the cable out. Easy enough. Now, this hard drive will go over in this bay. SATA 2, closest to the SATA 2, it just makes sense. Now, the way this cable is going to have me do this is by placing this hard drive upside down, because, unfortunately, the cables are not long enough to reach all the way across. That's just the way it's going to work, because you also do not want to stretch this cable too much, otherwise you could possibly rip it, and that would be a major problem. The next thing on the item list is this guy right here, which is an M2 to a SATA port, which is exactly what we need for this project. But like I mentioned before the current boot drive is in SSD 1 and if I were to just put this over in SSD 2 right now the cable would be routed over and the power cable interferes with the drive so I'm going to have to move the boot drive to another slot I'll go ahead and move it over to SATA 3 Apologies, on that last clip I meant to say SSD3, not SATA3. However, now SSD1 and 2 are both clear. So we can go ahead and place this back into the slot now. They made this really easy. Okay, now as you can see, the SSD boot drive is quite out of the way. This also clears up this empty space here, which you can use to stuff your excess cable into. We'll get to that now. This will go in here. I'll go ahead and place it in SSD2, so I'll have that empty space there. Another thought I had a minute ago was I could always place it in SSD4 and just have the cable route up to the top here. That way, if I wanted to add another SSD later, I could just place it here alongside and not have too much trouble. But, I don't really have any intentions of adding another SSD soon, and I don't really worry about the work too much. So, I'm just going to put it over here in SSD2 and call it good. As you can see, that was quite simple. Now... I'm going to go ahead and plug all of these cables in, get some power running to these drives. Again, pretty simple. 
Now you might notice this kind of sticks up a little bit and you can also see why I had to cut that fin a, bit, a little bit earlier. Because this SATA cable would have had a little bit of a problem with that. Now, we can get this cable in here. Again, fairly simple. Now this board may flex a little bit and honestly it's probably not great but it should be okay. As long as all the contacts are still being made we should be alright. At this point everything should be ready to go. Now you might want to put a little bit of something just to hold this down so it doesn't go getting in the way when you go to put the cover back on. There will be a slight bind between the case and this right here but it won't be enough to hurt anything. I've gone ahead and put a little bit of electrical tape in place just to hold it in place. It should help at least a little bit. At this point I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on just long enough to check and see if our little modification has worked. Because while I may have done the fabrication work before I have not actually done this modification yet. I have not actually made sure everything's actually going to work. So, this is kind of going to be the moment of truth sort of thing. Don't need to get it tight yet. As you can see, our drives have moved around a little bit, and I am happy to see that my 250 gig and my 1000 gig are still sitting there. Or the 250 gig is sitting there, and the 1000 is still sitting there, and the 120 has moved way down the list. Well, this might screw with my boot order a little bit. Let's go check on that real quick. Yes, it has. It is now trying to boot from the terabyte drive, and that is not going to work. <laughs> You might note we're on Legacy right now instead of UEFI. That is because I am not running Windows 8.1. Windows 7 does not seem to run on UEFI. Just a quick note. And then we come down here and we can change the boot orders. We of course want the solid state drive to go first. And as far as these go, it doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and save and see what she does. just like that and you'll notice we've got our hard drives all ready to go that was pretty easy now wasn't it got our 250 we'll go over here to our disk manager just for the heck of it and check it out there you go. 232, 931, 11.11. That concludes this video on how to modify your MSI GT72 laptop to add a second 2.5 inch laptop hard drive. Well, I guess not really. You still got to put the screws all back in, of course, but who's looking at the semantics now? Since I already have it open, I may as well go ahead and mention a couple extra details. Namely, the laptop's dual cooling fan configuration, which is really cool. 
and I will mention also keeps the system really cool. Here's the GPU which is interchangeable with other GPUs. The higher end models come with the GTX 970 or 980M. Mine is the 870M which you can also replace with the 880M. The CPU on the other hand which is a Core i7 4710 MQ is not interchangeable. This kind of struck me as a little bit odd, but I guess that's how it is. Over here you have your CMOS battery and your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And here you have two additional RAM slots for DDR3. The other two RAM slots, as I understand it, are under the keyboard and pretty difficult to access without taking the entire machine apart. Or maybe you do have to take the entire machine apart. Most everything I have determined about this laptop I've just read up online, including this modification. I have the guys at the notebook review forum to thank for this rather marvelous configuration. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say for this one here. When you go to put your cover back on, make sure you get it snapped down tight. It might be a little tight over here, but it still gets down pretty. It still gets down well, so it's all right. Back here is where you have a little bit of trouble. They don't like to snap very much. But once they do, it sure stays together well. And again, getting this screw in back here, you just basically reverse procedure and uh, take your deal and kind of get it started. Of course, try not to strip it out. But you probably, with this particular screwdriver, will not be able to get it all the way tight. <laughs> yeah, I just failed. So, there you go. You might notice your SATA cable here. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. <laughs>